Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. I'm gonna res respond to some comments because I think it's better that I respond in a video than typing it all out and having a fraction of the people see it. So one of the questions by Taco, <laughs> uh, hi Andy, what are your thoughts on China? Isn't China like 60% of global demand for raw materials? Uh, I believe the rally in a lot of the iron ore miners are due to China bouncing back from COVID and hurrying to restart delayed infrastructure projects. Uh, what if it's possible that China undergoes a credit contraction, how they're forcing their big fintech companies to cut back lending? Uh, I just think China might also play a big factor in how commodity prices are set and how it should be examined. So I'm not necessarily worrying about China. I, I think a major part of the demand, if we're going to go in this green revolution, and I'm looking out five, ten years from now, I'm not looking you know, six months ahead of us. If, if we... Uh, build all of these wind turbine engines that or I should say wind turbines they're not engines but wind turbines uh, I used to work in, in in a in a company that made turbine engines so I continually say turbine engines but it's just wind turbines those big bases are made of iron iron ore so we're gonna use an exceptional amount of iron an exceptional amount going forward and I think it's going to increase quite dramatically so what I'm looking for in my investments is I'm looking for iron ore plays, I'm looking for zinc, tin, I'm looking for copper, nickel, all of those base materials that are gonna be used in a, we'll call it an energy revolution, I'm gonna be piling into now because when this comes, people are just gonna to continue to pile into it. Uh, they broke, the, the diversified miners broke 15 year chart patterns. That, I, I can't not look at that. And with the dollar going down, we've got a lot of dynamics that are pushing these investments behind us. Uh, even if we don't want to go backwards, they're still going to push us forward. China, even though they may have a problem, per perhaps, that's, that's a maybe, that's an if, not a, not a when, this is an if. If they have a problem, uh, it could hit it in the short term. But you know what I see that as? I see that as a buying opportunity. I don't see that as a way to, to keep me from positioning. I, there's a lot of other comments about market crashes, if, if this were to happen, if, 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 if. There's a lot of ifs. What I'm betting on is something that is going to happen. It's not an if. It, it, I'm, I'm not worried about that. If we have short-term 30, 40% pullback, I may already be 300% up when that happens. So if I'm up 300%, we get cut in half, maybe I'm up 150% or something like that, or, or a little bit less, maybe it's 100% up. I'm still gonna take the position. If, if we get a large pullback, I'm gonna be piling into it. I'm gonna pile in, pile in, because I know that the fundamental underlying market conditions are completely ripe for the investments that I'm going into, and they're all gonna be pushed from the back eventually. Housing is short four million homes. They're gonna to have to build four million homes, irrespective of what's gonna happen three months from now. So the long-term play in, in, my, in my head, this is my opinion obviously, is you, you position when things look good, when the charts look good, when the market conditions are ripe, and when the valuations are dirt cheap, I have to be in it. And if I, if I ride volatility 30, 40% down, I'm buying more and I'm gonna hold on. My strategy is to play the entire valuation five, 10 years from now. I'm not looking at three, four, five months and a little short-term problem. That I'm not worried about that. That is something I'll cost average down into and I'm gonna ride it. I, I rode the last, I saw the last bull market and how explosive it can be in the middle and back end of it. And I, there is no way in hell I'm getting scared out of this. I am in it. And I am not, I am looking at those gains that I missed out on the first round. Granted, I didn't have nearly as much money. The first, the first time when I was younger, I saw it and there's no way I'm missing out. There is no possible way. A 30% decline, there is no way I'm selling. I am holding on to these things and I'm piling in when the valuations are this cheap. Just look at the deficits out there of all these materials 
That's why I'm diversified amongst all of this, precious metals, the royalty companies, and, and all these other areas, base metals, energy, like oil and gas, natural gas, and uranium. There's no way I'm gonna get spooked out of it. So that's my opinion. If you guys like this content, click the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you like making money. You know, I like making money. If you like making money, hit subscribe. Become part of our, uh, our community on this channel. Thanks for commenting. Appreciate it. This is Finding Value.